Is that enough claps, Tim? Have I clapped enough for you? Uh, we're gonna be checking out, um, what are we gonna be checking out on this video? Completely blanked there. Ah, so we're going to be talking about in this video um, three core fundamentals that every player that's just starting out should be focusing on. And they're the three areas that I find, um, especially beginner drummers, have the most trouble with um, whenever they're starting out and they become overwhelmed and thinking they need to focus on a bunch of different things when really there's a small subset of things that you need to be focusing on in every exercise. And if you'll do that, you'll see a ton of progress. So that's what this lesson is actually about. It's gonna be three tips or three things that you need to be focusing on in every exercise. All right, all right, all right. So here is three things that I think you, as a drummer that has just started out on the drums, you're just kind of getting your feet wet. It's so overwhelming. Like, what do I need to focus on? What do I, you know? And all too often we start chasing rabbits and focusing and working on things that really aren't applicable to playing music, which is the most important thing, is putting this instrument to music and finding practical uses for what you're using in your practice time. All right, so what should you, as someone that's just started out on the drums, focus on with your drumming? First, if you're wanting your first drum lesson, I've got that on the YouTube channel. Go check that out. Links below. I'm going to try to remember to pin a comment. It's your first drum be uh, beat. And then I also have another one that's your first drum fill, another one that is five drum fills that every drummer should learn, and then another one that gives you for some tips for setting up your drum set. And if you need a comprehensive program uh, for being a beginner and just Go, go to the website, links below this in the video description. Check out the Drum Better Daily program. I have a uh, killer program in there that a ton of drummers are going through and seeing results every day. It's a step-by-step -step what you need to do when you're first starting the, out on the drums or coming back. So that resource is there for you if you need it. All right, so what's the first thing? There's three things, and I'm gonna break them out for you. Drummers that are just starting out, and you, it's not what you think. You're, you're thinking I'm gonna say some pattern or some fill. You need to focus on groove, timing, and transitions, all right? So let's break this out. So the first thing we need to work on is timing, all right? Out of those three, timing is our job. It is our time is what we do as drummers. We state the time, we play the time. I mean, time is what we do, get accustomed to it. So we have to have good timing. I've heard a lot of players say, I'll say, hey, how was he? And they'll say, oh, it's pretty good. It doesn't have good time. And I'm like, well, uh, okay, that's job number one. So before you go learning any fancy licks or fancy, you know, grooves or whatever you may be doing, you have to work on your time. Now, let me play this and let you hear what bad time sounds like. Three. Okay, right? I'm all over the place. I'm dropping beats, I'm dragging, I'm pushing, and some of you are laughing because you're like, I kind of sound like that. It's okay. I totally sound like that for a very, very long time. So this mic is like, it's going to choke me. It's going to kill me before the lesson's over. Uh, I sounded like that for a very long time. What is good timing? Well, without a click or a metronome that we use in a lot in practice time, this is what good timing would sound like. Three. There's no big fluctuations in tempo. There's no dropped beats. There's no added beats, all of that. Now, how do we get that? Well, we get that by working with a click or a metronome. Those are the same thing, a click and a metronome. All right, and so what we do is we put that metronome on. Two, three, four. And we start to internalize this. And then we play with this. And here's a pro tip for you. If you're having trouble with the spacing in between those notes, make the subdivision smaller. So if you're on quarter notes and you're having trouble with that, go to eighth notes. If you're on eighth notes and you're having trouble with that, go to 16th notes. It's okay, it's not a crutch. It'll help you get through your practice time. And then once you get better time, you can back off of those subdivisions some. So I have eighth notes right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna line everything up with those eighth notes. You are not going to sound robotic. I promise you, you have a human frequency running through you. It's gonna be uniquely you. And we'll get into that in just a second. So here's an example now of good timing. Two, three, four.
everything lines up and is in perfect time with the tempo that we're at. All right. So timing is the first one. Now, a lot of people get confused with timing and groove. So let's jump to the second one. The second thing you need to be focusing on is groove. Timing is the layout of that beat to make sure we're not pushing and pulling. Groove is how that beat feels. It's the oomph behind that, right? It's why John Bonham sounds like John Bonham. It's like it's why Mark Juliana sounds like Mark Juliana. It's why, uh, you know, uh, Stuart Copeland or Steve Gadd or Billy Cobham or anybody. That's why they sound like themselves is it's groove. What groove are they putting there, okay? So to me, in my definition, groove is the space in between the notes. That's where groove is found. It's our treatment of that space in between the notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you an example of a groove that is locked in, a drum beat that's locked in, it's grooving, it feels good, versus a drum beat that is not, but we're still somewhat with the click, so that you can hear an example of what groove sounds like, what it doesn't sound like, and then I'll bring it back to what it does sound like, all right? Okay, so what happened? You saw all of a sudden I said, hey, here we go. I'm going to, seriously, like me and this mic. Oh, battle royale. It's like getting caught on everything. Excuse me while I have a professional moment. Um, where were we? Oh, yeah, we were talking about guitar licks. Um, nope, we are talking about drums. So you could see how it was locked in or grooving. Felt good. And then when I kind of looked at the camera, I was like, here we go. And then all of a sudden we were in time, but kind of. Like we were with the click, kind of. We were hitting all the downbeats, but in between we fudged the spaces. So whether you're playing a shuffle, if you've got a groove like this, one, two. Whether you're playing something like that or you're playing a real strict like Both of those have groove, it's just a different type of groove. So groove is how the, the drum beat feels. We can be in time but still have it feel stiff and not grooving. I'll give you an example of that where we're in time but it, it really doesn't groove. Three, four. Doesn't feel so good. Or we could play something like this. Two. So groove is definitely one of those intangibles in music.
but it's something that we can definitely work on. Now, it's something that I teach on. The groove and timing are both part of what I call the big seven, and that's one of the large kind of cornerstones of what I teach. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Drum Better Daily program, jump over there and do that. But it's one of the cornerstones. I teach assembly lines and chunking and zoning and the big seven and feedback loops. All of those things are, are really bedrock of, of uh, what I teach. And so timing and groove are definitely two of the big seven. Now, the third one, which seems... Maybe it should be in there, maybe it shouldn't. But it's transitions. So this is where I see uh, drummers that are just starting out having some of the biggest problems is their transitions. A transition is any time we go from one part of the song to another part of the song, from one groove to another groove, from one sound source to another sound source, or when we put a fill in there. That is a transitional moment. And I liken it to a, uh, a door. The door has hinges, right? So one room is one groove, the other room is the other groove, and that door and those hinges, that's going to be your drum fill. That's your transition. We don't want squeaky hinges. We want to be sure that we have well-oiled hinges and that everything goes smoothly. So I want to be able to play the gr drum groove, go into the drum fill, come out of the drum groove, and be into that next groove perfectly 100% before the first beat even happens, right? I want that transition to go very smoothly. So here's an example of a very simple fill, and the transition goes very smoothly. I'm going to play three bars of time the fill, and then I'll move to the ride cymbal after a crash cymbal. Three, four. Notice every time, 100% accuracy, now I varied the drum fill, that's not the important part. The important part is the transition. 100% accuracy, whether I'm crashing and coming back into the groove, or whether I'm lifting a hi-hat and coming back into the groove. I want 100% accuracy, I want to come straight back into that groove, and I don't want any delay time. Now, here's what I hear many times happening with um, drummers whenever they're playing. So, uh, the transition will speed up or slow down, and then when they get to the new groove, it locks up for a second. So here's an example of that. Three, four. So we get nervous, or we cheat and we drop a fill, or we add a, we drop a beat, or we add a beat. All of those things are things I, I had a student in here yesterday. That's what we were going over, and I was stopping and explaining. Very beginner student, very young, and I was explaining. Okay, you got to stay with my count. It's real important that we stay in time. You know, if you mess up the drum fill, just come back in on the one. That's okay. The thing that's constant though is time. Time is always going. So when the song it's counted off and you mess up a drum fill, the band's not gonna stop and be like, oh, hey, hold on guys, he messed up that drum fill, Let's, uh, you got it? Okay, cool. And then go, no, what happens? They keep plowing through and you gotta catch up in real time. So we have to have those skills. And so transitions is something that need to be focused on when you're just starting out. These are big picture items. And again, two of them are part of, the, of the, what I would consider the big seven. They need to be focused on in every exercise. So the three things I think all beginner drummers or those just starting out, all drummers in general, need to be focusing on are groove, timing, and transitions. And I think those first two I'd reverse, timing, groove, and transitions. The order is not important. They're all equally important, and we need to make sure that we do them well. Hopefully this has helped you. If it has, leave me a comment. Let me know that you stopped by. Which one of these do you struggle with the most? Is it the timing? Is it the groove, how things feel? Or maybe your transitions just suck. Mine did for a very, very, very long time. And on the bandstand live, it really kicked my butt some because I found that my transitions were crashing bands. They were causing me a lot of grief, and it took me many years to figure out that that was the problem. It wasn't groove A, it wasn't groove B, it was my transition. So I'm there with you, I have been there with you, and I believe that's why I can teach to it, is because I've, I've gone through this stuff. I totally get it, and I know the feelings and emotions that come with it. If it's helped you as well, share it with somebody that you think it may help. 
hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so you get all the notifications, all those things that you do. I'm putting out so much new content every week, three to four videos at this point. I have the beginner series that's free if you want to check that out. The links are below as well. Drum Better Daily Program, you should check that out. It's a membership program and it's catered to you and your specific needs. Tons of lessons in there, uh, pre-made lesson plans, and I'll make you personalized lesson plan if you need one. But whatever you do, I will see you here in the next video. Go practice your transitions and your timing and also your groove. I'll see you.